Hello everybody, it's Donnie with El Gallo Fly Fishing Lodge and this is your fire fly fishing update. Um, the F portion of this week is going to be over the EP rooster fish mullet. Uh, it's a great fly pattern. Everybody that fishes for rooster fish on the beach should probably have a few of these in their box. Uh, the reason that it's good is it's got a great profile. It's pretty sparsely tied. This is this one's tied pretty thick. I just wanted a really big bushy uh, profile for this one, but um, it seems like it, uh, it it works really really well. And the reason for it is it's kind of got this big kind of head that that pushes water really well, makes it have a little bit of a side to side action and uh, it, it just looks very realistic in the water. You can tie these in a variety of different manners. Um, you can make this, uh, you know, a little bit more sparse, so you can tie the bigger flies like this, right? And, and actually be able to still cast it 100 feet relatively easy. Um, and, and, and like I said, whenever you're racing this thing through the water, the motion of it really doesn't matter all that much right? It's, it's more about the profile and kind of the fine movements of it, right? But um, it, it's fooled a lot of rooster fish and there's, there's good reason for it. Um, Enrique Pugliese is, is, a, is a genius. Um, he's, he's made some really, really good flies and he didn't miss the mark on this one. So here's how to tie them. All righty Roo. Let's get stuck right in here. So speaking of stuck right in. Um, this is the type of uh, hook that we're going to be using today. It's a Gamakatsu um, B10S Stinger in a size 4 aught. I like this hook because number one it's got a pretty good um, strong wire on it, number one, but um, number two it's got a pretty big wide wide gap and it's got a long enough shank that I can actually um, put a lot of material on this make it really bulky in the head and that's kind of what I'm going for with this tie today so I'm gonna start with the basic you know wrap pretty close to the bend of the shank snip off the excess I like to dab a little bit of uh, super glue on this just to make sure that I've got a good base. Nothing more frustrating than everything coming undone. All right, we're gonna start off with some EP fibers and I've actually augmented this with a little bit of SF um, fiber as well. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to measure how far I think I should, should have this. So we want this to be a pretty long fly So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down, secure it with a couple of wraps. Then I'm going to double this back over. Pinch it down, then secure it. Just make very sure that it's it's secure as, as well as it can be. All right. The reason that I put the uh, the SF material in this is you can probably see there's a pretty fair amount of flash in this, right? But it's not just overly abundant. It's not anything that's just going to to go crazy, right? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to extend this a little bit. So I'm going to grab from this side, and I'm going to grab from this side over here, and then I'm just going to kind of pull these two apart, right? The reason for this is it elongates the fibers, right? And you can see some of them starting to kind of come undone there. Whenever you see that start to happen, just kind of pinch it in the middle. Trim what you got here from both sides. 
just bring it back to the middle, right? Then what you're going to do is secure it on one side, give a couple of good wraps, bring this up and over, and then secure it to the other side as well. Right, there you go. Now that's bulked that up quite a bit. It's considerably long and um, you've got a good basis of being able to, to build your body now. All right, next thing is to go to um, a tan color. And something that I've noticed with, uh, with Mullet and Baja, they're not really all that dark, right? So sometimes you can go dark with them if it's low light situations. You know, give them a, a little bit of a better target, but um, on a typical basis, though, you just kind of you kind of want to match the hatch, right? So take that up to the top, bring it back over like what we did earlier. Kind of flatten it down a little bit. And then secure it down really well. All right. For the next thing, we're gonna pull out a little bit more and then we're gonna elongate it like we did with the white. it down and with this one instead of going over the top we're going to go through the bottom like this and we'll secure this down all the way to the to the front okay all right now it's time to add the gill. So we're gonna take some red. I'll probably double this over and snip it just like that. We're gonna bring this over the top. it and go around both sides like this but basically we don't want to go crazy with this stuff but we do want to give the illusion that it has has gills most fish do all right so now you have a choice to make either a you can go with a brush or b um, you can, you can stack this stuff, keep, keep stacking it, um, or C, you can kind of go with both. So what we're gonna do is take an EP brush, right? I like these, they, they're easy. Um, this one's not quite as dense as, as what I uh, would like for the full head. So we'll basically do kind of a, a hybrid of both. So I'm gonna wrap this around. And I'm gonna keep it pretty, pretty tight on itself back here. And basically, this is just sort of to get me past this thread. And I mean, this this stuff stands up pretty well, gives it some good bulk. Like I mentioned before, it really helps out if you if you can bulk that head up a little bit to give you some more motion.
secure that wire down. I'm going to pull everything back and ensure that it's secured down really well. I'm going to take a dog brush and brush this whole fly out with it. I've got a little bit of a darker brown color here that I've actually mixed myself. I'm going to use this for the top. As if you notice, most things that swim are darker on the top than they are at the bottom. Right? And this is kind of the cool thing about um, actually stacking this stuff in and, and doing this instead of wrapping the whole thing. So you get kind of a monocolored front whenever you wrap it with a brush. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, is make sure that I've got that secured really well, turn it about four or five times. Then I'm actually gonna chop it, all right? Then I'm gonna take some of this lighter stuff that I've got right here. This is tan, it's not white. But I'm going to kind of do that to the same thing on the bottom side. So make sure that these are split like this. And then gently loop that in, right? So I took a full turn of this thing before I really snugged it down with any pressure, right? And then I just kind of secure the whole thing down, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the two. I'm gonna secure the top down, go in front of it, and then I'm gonna secure the back side or the bottom side of it. Pull everything back like this and then just make sure that everything's snug. Then I'll trip the, trim the back side of this off. Basically you want this to be right about where the hook point is. I'm going to do the same thing to the top and just keep moving forward with it. So <clears throat> this is this is probably going to be a lot of redundant stuff. I'll probably just speed this up. So basically just the same thing all the way to the front of the head. Be mindful whenever you're doing this as to where your open spots are. All right, and see if you can't get all of those open spots to actually have material on them. This stuff is never really it, it doesn't look perfect whenever you do it, but it all seems to kind of work out in the end. If it doesn't do what you want it to do, just kind of manipulate it, move it, and then snug it down. It's a lot like stacking hair.
Okay. You can tell that takes quite a bit of material to do that. So I'm just going to snug this up, push this back, much the same as what you would do with just spinning deer hair. Kind of pick through it all and make sure that you got what you want. A bit sparse on that side over there, but it'll be okay. One in question, brush it out. And I can tell for sure, definitely, that side over there is not quite what I want it to be. So I'm just going to take some more of this material and make it what I want. You can tell just by how hard this is to cut that, I mean, it's, it's dense, it's thick, and it's, it's going to push some water.
Now it's just starting to take shape. All right, so I'm gonna pull this thing off of here and I'm gonna kind of work with the general shape of the, of the whole body, right? So really, I mean, what you wanna start doing is not necessarily just starting from way back here, but kind of taper this thing from starting here and kind of working back. And then just kind of pull those fibers down as you go. And this will kind of help you get that elongated, elongated body. kind of start with the with the other end of this you know. head of the steel doesn't look right to me so I'm gonna start making it look right I can tell that this is a little bit too bulky right here. So I'm gonna start taking it down. I don't really like to obsess over you know, how the body works with these things because whenever they get wet they change completely and it just kind of it all seems to work out in the end. So next thing that I want to do is if you notice you know, the fins of these things are a little bit darker. Sometimes I, I just do them in brown. Sometimes I do them in black. But the EP fly actually has black, so we'll do that. All right, next thing is for our eyeballs. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit of green on the top too, just with a regular Sharpie. Just go through your head like this, give a little bit of a green tinge to it. And then something that I like to do is just pull everything tight and do stripes.
just to give it a little bit of an extra. All right, let's add some eyeballs to this dude and then call her quits. Just the same uh, Gorilla Glue works just fine. A little bit of a better type of glue for this is Terramender. It's um, it's basically made for like a like a fabric adhesive or like people use it on leathers, things like that. But just a good drop of that, and then. Eye on that. This stuff is wicked too. Um, I was actually tying flies with a um, with a uniform and a little bit of it stuck the top of it. Um, so I tried to push it and get it out of there and it squirted all over my uniform and immediately I went and put it under hot water and tried to uh, tried to get the stuff out of there. I it ruined it. It absolutely ruined it. You can't, you can't get that stuff out of fabric. But uh, something good to do is basically don't use your fingers for this, but use like a metal. Tweezers work good. I don't have any with them with me right now, so I just take a couple of uh, scissors and, and put those on either side of it. But just kind of mash that down. Just make it to where that glue gets up in there. But it doesn't take long for it to dry. From there, you just kind of troubleshoot. You know, if you see spots that you don't like, take those down. But other than that, it's it's pretty much a done fly. So that is EP Roosterfish Mullet Fly. <laughs>